Hi, everyone. I'm Daniel Kivatinos, Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Dr. Chrono. Today, I'm going to be talking about the future of telehealth and how it's changing our industry. The mission of, of our company, just to, at a high level before I get into the, the details of, of telehealth and, and, and where we're going and what directions we're going in as a company and, and as an industry, the mission of what we're uh, trying to do in the telehealth space, uh, it is looking at the world and trying to enable and empower physicians and providers to be able to put their practice into a network where any patient out there can find that provider and book a time. Now, just a little history on our company. We're very mobile centric. We're rated as the top mobile medical record in the Apple App Store. And some background on our company, we build a platform, think of it as the operating system for a medical practice. And what that means is the medical practice out there can use Dr. Chrono. Dr. Chrono has several different verticals of what the providers can leverage. One of them being telehealth. We recently launched telehealth. Another being practice management. And what practice management is, is it's basically the scheduling side of the medical practice. Another is the medical billing side. Dr. Chrono also does revenue cycle management. And essentially that is a smart way to do uh, collections from insurance companies so the doctor can get paid as fast as possible. Generally providers are trained to be physicians and not to go and you know fight on medical claims and denials and those sorts of things. We also have a patient portal. So today we have over 23 million patients in Dr. Chrono and we are booking thousands and thousands of medical appointments um, per week. We have a personal health record and a marketplace as well. Now, just to jump into telemedicine and the industry and where telemedicine is really making an impact, because of COVID-19, there's been a huge, huge change in, in, in the world. And frankly, this whole change has happened overnight. Instantaneously, Dr. Chrono, we were all working remote. That We've never done that before. Instantaneously, uh, you know, full industries were trying to figure out how do they operate from you know, their employees from home and use all of these cloud tools. And that did affect the medical markets. So when you look at the industry, you know, just, just looking at like the stock market, <laughs> everything just kind of dropped in the market and people were kind of terrified of what COVID meant and how we were gonna, you know, post COVID world, how things are gonna operate. It really uh, caused a lot of disarray. So everything just changed in a day. Now, just to give you some data insights on the market, and to understand like the healthcare industry and in, in, in where telehealth fits in this whole industry, there is a market size and what is the market size? So everybody out there talks about something called the GDP. Now, what is GDP, gross domestic product? Gross domestic product, the, the definition is, it's the best way to measure a company's economy. So the GDP is the total value produced by all of the people and companies in a country. Now, what is the GDP of the United States? Uh, approximately a little over a tri $19 trillion. So it's around 15% of the world's economy. What's the GDP spend in healthcare in the United States? That's approximately $3.5 trillion. 17.9% of the GDP is spent on healthcare. So looking at one research report that I pulled up 
in this, you know, huge, vast spend in the United States, in our GDP, what is the telemedicine market worth? It is approximately worth by 2027, $155 billion market in 2027. And there's something called CAGR, C-A-G-R, which stands for um, compounding aggregate growth rate. So it's it's going to be growing around 15% year over year, which is enormous. That's a massive growth rate. So it's a huge growth opportunity and COVID kind of ignited this fire. Now, there's something called the S-curve and the S-curve talks about like innovation and waves of innovation that happen over time. And part of the S-curve, one example is paper. So paper was created. It was kind of a, a massive innovation. You could put a lot of information down and exchange that piece of paper and transfer that information. As time had gone on, they had these massive mainframes where they were trying to process information. Mainframes became a big industry. Over time, you know, personal computers and floppy disks were kind of a thing and you could transfer that data with you and bring it with you. <clears throat> and then there were DVDs. You could take a lot more data and carry it in your pocket. But the S-curve of innovation that is happening now, it's the cloud. And it is things like the iPhone. So having like software vendors like Dr. Crono in the cloud with the phone really can enable this telehealth industry. Now, the way that I kind of think about things, we're kind of in a renaissance. So I have a picture here of the Golden Gate Bridge. It shows how much work it took to build the Golden Gate Bridge. In telehealth, we're in that same kind of renaissance where we're creating telehealth today and it's kind of uh, going to be interesting how everything plays out. And I'm going to walk through some of my thinking here. My prediction is more providers in the future will be doing more telehealth appointments than in person. You can see Medicare and Medicaid uh, leading the pack. You can see the insurers started following Medicare and Medicaid. So when Medicare and Medi Medicare make a change, everybody kind of just follows suit with what the government is doing. So let me walk into some of the reasons now around why telehealth makes sense today. One of the reasons why telehealth is really making an impact, a lot of providers are getting COVID. Providers today are seeing vast amounts of patients at a rapid rate. Many patients are getting sick and walking into these facilities and providers are catching COVID. And they still wanna see patients. Now, how do you see those patients if you have COVID through telemedicine? Patients are also getting COVID. Patients are getting COVID. Now, do you want that, that patient, if they feel fine, and they're breathing okay, <clears throat> do you want that patient to go into a medical facility? The answer is maybe, depending on the situation. So in that situation, telehealth makes a lot of sense for that patient to have that conversation and that dialogue with the provider through a telehealth appointment. Should I come in? I feel fine, I'm, I feel okay. So telehealth really enables that provider to have that dialogue with that patient, protecting them both, the patient and the provider. There are companies like ZocDoc out there, and ZocDoc is great. But if you look at ZocDoc, they, prior to COVID, 
they used a uh, location to find a provider in the area closest to you. So you would go to, a, and it, there's a lot of physician finding services out there, <clears throat> but the patient would go to, uh, you know, this directory and search for a provider that is close to them. Distance is becoming less relevant. And what do I mean by that? You used to just look at the time from, you know, the drive to work, the drive home from work. But now, you know, you're trying to squeeze in that appointment. If distance is less relevant, you can see a provider that's 100 miles away, a provider that's 150 miles away, a provider that's 200 miles away. <clears throat> so you can kind of find the right provider that fits your needs. Now, looking here, another thing that is super relevant are reviews. So if you're not finding that provider in person and distance is not a problem because of telehealth, you'll be able to find a provider that fits your needs, that has social proof reviews that actually will legitimize that this is the right person for you to see. So reviews are becoming even more important than ever. Sure, they were good before, but if you had one provider in your area, say that there's not a lot of medical professionals where you live, you would probably pick the one close to you and you'd go drive to them. You really didn't have a choice. Now, telehealth is really enabling a market where providers and patients can kind of figure out a good fit and what fits that patient's needs best. So reviews are really enabling the patient to pick the provider they need. Without distance, you can go see any provider. If there's reviews that make you feel comfortable and then you have a consultation with that provider, you'll feel really comfortable. But reviews are an indicator to book that telehealth appointment with that provider. We're moving away from a hyper local physician finding kind of experience to an online directory physician finding experience. So what that means, there was a time where you would go to the yellow pages and you'd find somebody local to you that you could just drive to quickly. Another thing that's happening is marketing is changing. So providers have to become way more sophisticated in how do they market themselves with a telehealth virtual practice. So they have to learn about tools out there that can, that can help them market. Another interesting thing is mental health. There's a lot of niches out, out there that fit the telehealth experience. I'm gonna call out mental health. There's a lot of stigma around mental health say a patient has depression. Now in the past, because of that stigma, they'd go, oh, there's something wrong with me. I don't want to go to the doctor. I'd have to drive to the psychiatrist. That just doesn't work for me. It's, I feel you know, ashamed of what's happening. And <clears throat> around telehealth, you can have a better private experience in your own home, unlike ever before. So, Anyone who has isolation issues or anyone who has any you know, mental health issue, they're gonna feel way more comfortable finding that provider, booking that virtual appointment, and then having that dialogue. Here's Dr. Chrono's telehealth solution. So you can see uh, a patient having a dialogue with a mental health professional here. Going to the provider also takes time and it's hard for us all to find the time to take care of our needs. It's hard to, to find the time to take care of our, our family's needs. When you can simply click and book and have that virtual visit, it saves us all that frustration and time driving to the provider's office, right? You know, prior to COVID, you'd say, okay, I need to book an hour. I need to drive to that doctor's office. I need to wait in that waiting room. There's none of that, none of that with telehealth. You simply just hop on that virtual visit and you're kind of off to the races. You could be anywhere. You could be in your car, you could be at home, you could be in your backyard and you can just have that dialogue with the provider. 
down the block from me, there is a location where they do treat COVID patients. Now, do I want to go in that location? The answer is no. I think with, I call it a, a COVID positive location because they clearly are treating people. They're taking care of very sick people. A telehealth appointment for locations like that make a lot of sense to protect other types of patients that just want to have other types of encounters. Say a patient wants to get a refill of a prescription. Do they need to go into a COVID positive location? The answer is no. They could simply book time with their provider. Provider can hop on a virtual visit with them. They can have a quick dialogue about what's going on. Provider can say, okay, so you need X, Y, and Z refilled. Not a problem. Let me send the prescription to your local pharmacy and you should be good. So any po COVID positive locations, you don't have to go to them. Another example of why telehealth is such a paramount change in our industry, anything like a simple checkup, do, you know, you're questioning, should I go to the provider? Should I go to my doctor? I went to one of my medical professionals and he had plastered all over the wall, do not come in if you feel sick, do not come in if you feel ill. It made me feel really uncomfortable in that experience. I, I would be happy, and I'm sure a lot of patients out there would be happy to do a virtual checkup on you know, just how you are. I was talking to one uh, urgent care and the urgent care was talking about how their patient in-person visits last week were down 40%. This, is a, this was an urgent care in one of the most populated cities in the world, using Dr. Kronos said that their patients' visits were down 40%. If they layered in telehealth on top of the in-person visits, they could see more patients. And a lot of these patients are, you know, they probably would go, but they're scared of COVID and there's that stigma now. So how do you get those patients to come back in? virtual visits. Virtual visits are a way for them to just bump those, that, those, those patient visits back up. So any quick checkup can be done through a virtual visit. Another example are homebound patients. So say you have uh, an elderly family member or you have uh, someone who just had a surgery on their knee. Anyone who is homebound, telehealth makes a lot of sense because they don't have to have someone bring them to the doctor. They can simply just have a checkup from home. Now, all of this is you know, based on the scenarios, but as I go through these you know, examples, it's clear to me the world is going to change and telehealth is gonna be a big part of all of our lives moving forward. Telehealth also allows a provider to be able to protect themselves when they record a visit. So say uh, a patient says, oh, this happened in this telehealth appointment. If a provider does record a visit, it allows that provider to pull up the information and say, well, this is what was you know, suggested in the visit. It allows a provider to honestly have that extra layer of protection for themselves but it also allows the provider to prove to an insurance company that they actually did the visit. Sometimes insurance companies are seeing, you know, different levels of treatment and they'll, they'll ask for documentation from the provider or there's an audit. Having telehealth appointments that are recorded and, doc and full documentation allows the provider to honestly protect themselves in a lot of ways where they can say, hey, this is the reason why I build X, Y, and Z. Here's all the, the visits, here's all the documentation and it will protect the provider. One thing I kind of wanted to go into is machine learning and artificial intelligence. So layered on top of telehealth, you can also have a lot of interesting things happen. And I think when, when I spoke about the, it being the Renaissance before, there's some really interesting things you can do and layer in on top of that interaction that's happening with the provider.
before I even get into that, I think one thing that this is just one article that talks about uh, AI and machine learning. It is <clears throat> just in this one source, which is Fast Company. It's a $30 billion market in just AI and machine learning in healthcare. So if you layer in on top of telehealth, you know, that massive market, you layer in AI, it's a huge market when you layer in these two things together and it gets really, really interesting. Here's one article that says uh, artificial intelligence, you know, will reach $110 billion in 2024. So it's going to be a huge market, but not only is telehealth a massive market, you know, multi-billion dollar market, you layer in artificial intelligence and machine learning on top of that. It's just a massive, massive market out there. One of the things I kind of wanted to bring up was uh, facial recognition. When you're having a telehealth appointment, it's really interesting because you're going to catch nuances. Sometimes a provider will not catch a nuance, but if you have machine learning or artificial intelligence looking at facial movements, they may catch something really interesting like depression or anxiety or something else. So if you have that telehealth interaction happening with the provider, there's a lot of dialogue and exchange happening. AI might say this patient might be depressed. We've seen you know, indications <laughs> from the patient. So then it flags the provider and the provider would know, oh, okay, I just, I didn't realize that. Because an interaction tends to happen fast in a provider patient setting, it's going to be super interesting because there's going to be AI type co-pilot scribes, meaning if there's that interaction happening and the interaction, you know, a lot of providers see, you know, 15 minute increments, they'll see patients. There's so much information exchanged when the provider and the patient are talking, it's really hard for the provider to just type it all furiously, to document it. So having an AI scribe catching the microphone and, and what's happening in that dialogue allows the provider to focus on the patient. And there's a lot of companies out there kind of thinking about this problem and, and working on this problem. Another thing is early diagnosis, AI, say someone coughs, you may be able to catch like the flu. What is that cough, right? What, what's happening there? So the AI might actually be able to catch any indications of any symptoms. There's also tone and voice, right? People have moods. You can detect a mood. You can determine if a patient is in a good mood or a bad mood. So it's gonna be a really interesting time layering in AI with and machine learning on top of telehealth. I just threw a lot at you and like one of the areas I think that's gonna be super interesting. Now, just talking about the growth rate, Dr. Crono, we've seen an accelerated growth rate in telehealth appointments. And it's primarily because of what I had mentioned before. The insurance companies are now paying out for these appointments, unlike they ever have before. They're getting paid, doctors are getting paid faster, but also patients want it and providers want it. So we've seen this like, hyper growth. Now, Dr. Crono launched a physician, we are launching and gonna be rolling out a physician network where patients can book appointments with providers and find the right provider for them. And it will be an online experience. So what is the difference between a a Dr. Chrono type telehealth and other types of telehealth. One of the things is you could do things that are super interesting. So if you have a patient and you're, do, you're having that interaction, you can order a lab through a telehealth appointment. Imagine having that interaction with the provider, the provider saying, I kind of want you to get your cholesterol checked. And then the provider just indicating where you need to go. And then you just get your cholesterol checked. It's such a different interaction than other types of virtual visits and virtual software. The same thing also, you, you, we, uh, in our software, you could have a medication prescribed. Now, another thing that I wanted to bring up was something called RPM. RPM means remote patient monitoring. 
Now, remote patient monitoring, what is that? I'm just gonna read off one definition. And the way that I think about telehealth, there's the telehealth appointments, there's the AI and machine learning, and then there's gonna be RPM or remote patient monitoring. And what remote patient monitoring is basically a way for a provider to get more information about a patient and use that in a telehealth appointment. Now, one example, I'll just call out one example of RPM, remote patient monitoring, is Apple Watch. So if a provider can have that virtual visit and the patient can say, enable their heart rate and in real time have that data go to the provider. And remote patient monitoring is kind of a huge industry that's kind of blossoming. And we're gonna see a lot happening in the RPM remote patient monitoring space. And there are a lot of uh, IoT devices. IoT devices are internet of thing devices that I, I think are gonna be part of this new RPM movement that's layered in with telehealth. And I'm just gonna go through a few examples here of RPM type products that patients are can use to share some of their data with their provider fully remote while their provider is doing a telehealth appointment. One is a glucose meter. So patients say they have diabetes, provider asks the patient, you know, how are you doing? The patient can simply just take a reading and that data can go right into the cloud and the provider can look at that. Another example is uh, a thermometer. Now, a good example is COVID. You know, you think you have COVID, the provider may ask you to take your own temperature and that, da that data can go right into the cloud and the provider can look at that and say, okay, this, you know, you have a normal temperature or it's, you know, elevated. Sleep monitoring, you could monitor sleep. Here you see something called the aura ring. That's just one device that can track some information about you as you sleep. So moving on, one thing I wanted to talk about was uh, with telehealth, it's a cloud-based experience happening. There's gonna be AI and there's gonna be RPM. Now, one of the interesting things is you're gonna need a lot of other amazing cloud apps out there. And layering into telehealth, I do see layered in partner apps to complement what we're doing in telehealth. One of those partners, we're at the Acronis conference. I really wanna talk about where Cronus fits into telehealth and how they're helping Dr. Crono, they are a complementary app in the sense that with all of this data that is housed in Dr. Crono, we can take that data and place it into a Cronus, into their backup solution. And what this means is the provider can take that data and share it and do what they want with it in ways that allow them to possibly treat patients. So say a provider has a telehealth appointment and the provider records a session, they can place that into a Cronus and internally they can have a discussion about what happened in that telehealth appointment. Now, I'm just gonna walk you through how that product works for a second, just so you guys can understand how these partnerships and this, these cloud apps can work together. Here you can see, uh, this is how the Acronis backup solution works with Dr. Chrono. You can see here that there is a connect to Acronis right here, and then there's a, a connect button. When you press the connect button, you can connect Acronis and sync data from Dr. Chrono to Acronis. There's a lot of options here. Some of them are, you know, there's a drop down here. You can sync some patients, you can sync all patients. But here you can really see this is where a Cronus sync sits. So you'll have Dr. Chrono, you can do your telehealth appointment. You could have that encounter. You can document that appointment. You may want to take that data. You may want to place it someplace else. You may want to share it with either another app or another Enter, enterprise, but doing that through Acronis allows us to have that, uh, it, it empowers the provider group to use the data they need to and exchange it and have those conversations the way they need to. I think that <clears throat> there are a lot of medical companies out there that actually 
don't share data in a constructive way, but a Kronos partnered with Dr. Chrono to allow us to honestly have a good cloud experience for those providers who are doing everything remote. And I just wanted to give you guys a really quick snapshot. This is a simple snapshot of how easy it is to partner with a Kronos. And this is an example of their code. If you're a developer, you can kind of take a quick look at how simple and easy to use the, to, to do an integration with a Kronos is. So I think I'll just bring up one more good concept here that's interesting about telehealth and what's happening. It's going to be an interesting time. Telehealth uh, is free for now from Dr. Chrono. There's a lot happening out there. And we're going to see a lot of interesting players come out. And we're going to see a lot of interesting things happen. But as patients, we're all patients and we're all trying to protect our families. Telehealth is only going to help us. Thank you so much. And with that, I'll uh, be taking questions.